أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هادي الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وإمامنا وشفيعنا محمد عبد ورسوله صلوات الله وسلام عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Light Upon Light a live broadcast on Afrocentric TV Instagram. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. My name remains Ghania Akuride and I welcome you to the program. Today <clears throat> we want to remind ourselves of who Allah Azza wa Jalla through Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described as the Ibadu Rahman, the servants of the Most Merciful. You know, when Allah calls us the servants, or slaves for that matter, you know, it is an honor, a great honor, that we are not amongst those he does not want to be associated with. So we want to find out which category of the Ibadu Rahman do we belong to. Let us read from the Holy Quran, that is um, chapter 25 of the Holy Quran, Surah um, Al-Fulqan, from verse 63, yes. Where Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Bad Awud Billahi Min Ashshaitan Al Rajim, Bismillahi Al Rahman Al Rahim, Wa Ibad Al Rahman Al Ladina Yamshoon Ala Al Ard Hawna, Wa Ida Khatabahum Al Jahiluna Qalu Salama, Wa Al Ladina Yabitoon Al Rabbihim Sujadan Wa Qiyama." Now there are several categories of Ibad Al Rahman servants. Honorable servants of the Most High, where quite a number of them in this uh, towards the end of Surah Al Furqan. So we'll be taking maybe one or two per day to encourage us, if we don't belong to that group yet, to encourage us to use this opportunity of the month of Ramadan to make sure that we belong to that group. So Ibadur Rahman, Alladina Yamshun Al Al Ardi Hauna. They, the servants of the Most Merciful, are those who walk upon the earth easily. Yani, they don't walk as if they want the, the earth to cleave asunder. They don't walk the earth as if they are, you know, they are, they know all and do all and there is nothing they can do, there is nothing they can see, there is nobody they cannot deal with. They walk on the surface of earth with arrogance. Those are not the Ibad Rahman. Those are not the honorable servants of Allah, the most merciful. They are the easygoing people. When you see them, you see peace. When they talk, they talk with peace. When you talk to them, they listen. You know, they give you a dignifying attention. They are not haughty. They are not, you know, overbearing. They are not uh, pompous. They are not arrogant. They are easygoing they are humble. They are the ones who look upon themselves as nothing. But the whole world looks upon them as something, as someone, as a dignifying person, as a dignified person. So they walk easily on earth. And when the ignorant address them harshly, they say words of peace. So when they are even annoyed, when they are talk to harshly, when they are bullied, when they are addressed with disrespect, they just say salam. You know, they don't descend low to the level of those who do not know because they say to themselves, oh my Lord, forgive him or her for he or she knows not what he or she is doing. Just as we learned from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he left Mecca, and he went to Taif, a neighboring town. When the persecution of the Muslims was becoming unbearable, 
he was looking for a safe heaven for them. He was looking for a place of safety for them. So he went to a neighboring town called Toiv, which is a town within a, in a valley, you know, surrounded by mountains, hoping that they will receive him and receive the message of Allah from him. But guess what happened? They turned the street urchins on, on him. They turned the hooligans of the, of, of the city on him. They turned the area boys of the city on him and they pelted him with stones. They stoned him so badly that he bled and bled and bled. He bled so much that his, 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 his sandals became heavy with his blood. It was a very, very um, pathetic situation. And then the angels came to him. Ya Rasulullah, what do you want us to do to these people who stoned you? Should we crush the mountains that surround them over them and bury them under the rubbles of the mountains? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Salam. They don't know what they're doing. You know, if they know what they were doing, they won't do it. And if we destroy them, what happens to the generations yet to be born? You never can tell. Even if these people do not believe in me today, their children tomorrow may believe. And truly, go to Taif today. Everywhere, everyone there is a Muslim. Every home is a Muslim home. You know, that is Abdul Rahman. That is the servant, the honorable servant of Allah the Most Merciful. Showing mercy. And you know, Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we did not send you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the entire universe. لِلْعَالَمِينَ To the entire universe. To the world of humans, the world of genes, the world of animals, the world, everything that Allah created, you are a mercy to them. And so, Allah describes us as people who are easygoing, who are not the starters of trouble, and even when trouble comes, they offer the hand of friendship. And about them, Allah said in the Quran, whoever does this, now towards the end of Surah al furqan Allah says, whoever engages in such an action, hmm, they are the ones that Allah will give a house to, a home in Al Jannah. Hmm? أُولَٰئِكَ يُزَوْنَ غُرَفَةً بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا حَصُنَتْ مُسْتَقَرًا وَمُقَامًا Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, These people, the Ibadu Rahman, these easygoing people, these peace-loving people, they are the ones who, when they, <clears throat> at the end of time, when they get to <clears throat> the day of judgment, they are those who, <clears throat> excuse me, they are the ones who Allah will, will give, will award the chamber, a beautiful home, a very, very special home for what they patiently endured. And they will be received therein with greetings and words of peace. Now when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to describe this home that we are talking about, this wonderful estate in Al Jannah, you know, that is gonna be given to these people, these easy and peace loving people, he said, Inna fil jannati ghurafa, that definitely there is a home, a chamber, uh, let me call it a mansion in Al Jannah, you see the inside of it from outside. And you see the outside of it from inside. When you're inside the house, this wonderful mansion, you can see outside. And when you're outside, you can see the inside. Yani, it is made of crystals, you know, very clear glass. I don't know you know very clear something I don't know what that material is but Allah knows it 
It is exceedingly beautiful, breathtakingly beautiful. You can see the outside of it from inside and the inside of it from outside. And his disciple, his companions asked him, Ya Rasulullah, Liman Hada, who will inherit this kind of house? Who will Allah make this kind of house for? He said, Liman Atob al Kalam. Liman Atob al Kalam. That is exclusively for those who come with good words, who say nice things to people, who don't rain curses or abusive words on people, who do not backbite, who do not say evil about others, whether in their presence or in their absence. You know, there are some people who are so bold, you know, who are so given to, you know, cursing people and they, they even, you know, make a point of it, you know, uh -huh. don't, don't, don't mess with me, you know what, don't mess with me because I can so curse you that you want to drop dead. Huh. That is not going to earn you anything from Allah. If you hurt people's feelings with your words, with your tongue, then you are robbing yourself or denying yourself the opportunity of inheriting this beautiful home that we're talking about in our Jannah. Because Allah says that home is for those who come with good words, who even when you hurt their feelings, they still say, peace be unto you. They say, peace be unto you. These are the people in the month of Ramadan when fasting, and you come charging at them and abusing them and wanting to, you know, to pick up a fight with them. They say, Allahumma, inni sa'ima. Ya Allah, bear witness, bear witness that I am fasting. And I'm not fasting, I am not fighting this person because I am fasting. And they'll turn to the person and say, peace be upon you. Please, please, whatever it is, just let go. Okay, I offend you, forgive me, I'm sorry. Even if you are the one on the right, even if you are the one that has done the right thing and the person is just bully, bullying you unnecessarily, just say, for the sake of peace, please. You know, this is Ramadan. We're fasting. This is not the time to pick up fight, fights. We don't want to lose all our effort. We don't want to go hungry for no reason. We don't want our effort to be wasted. Please, if I'm the one that wronged you, just forgive me. And you know, as you're saying this, people around will come around and say, hey, you know, peace. Come on, embrace peace. I read in the... Um, a post that was put on um, WhatsApp recently in a house where people, two women started fighting and their husbands came out and wanted to find out what was going on and they picked on each other. The two men started fighting, wanting to, um, you know, preserve the, the dignity of their wives as it were. And they ended up killing each other. The two men ended up beating each other to death. The Prophet ﷺ told us, he warned us against getting angry unnecessarily. Anger is of shaitan. <clears throat> and shaitan is your avowed enemy. He's going to be there saying, yeah, beat him, hit him, curse him, do it, yeah. You know, but you should remember that you are of Allah. That Allah wants peace for you. And Allah wants, pe wants peace from you to the rest of humanity, to the rest of his creation. So when that happens, the Prophet ﷺ said, when you get angry like that, and you want to be a, an honorable servant of the Most Merciful, he said, if you are standing, sit and say, A'udhu Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim. Ya Allah, protect me. I seek protection with you from Shaitan. If you sit down and you're still angry or whoever is trying to get you annoyed is still charging at you, lay down. Lie down. If that does not work, get up and go to the restroom. Make wudu. Make wudu. And walk out. Walk away from that place where you're being angered. Walk away from there and go make wudu. And you know you make wudu with water. Remember, shaitan was created from fire, right? And what puts out fire effectively? It's water. So when you pour the water of wudu on yourself, 
it will put out the fire of shaitan. And you keep saying, Audhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Audhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Audhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. And as Allah is working with you, and the angels are surrounding you, they're going to work on the person that is trying to get you angry as well, by the special grace of Allah. And peace will descend upon the household where you are, where that anger issue is coming from. And then, after you make your wudu, go and do two raka nafla. You know, just whether it's time for salat or not, just go and pray and tell and talk to Allah. In your sujood, talk to Allah. Ya Allah, take away this anger from me. And take away this object of anger from me. Help us, Ya Allah, to overcome this anger. It could be between a husband and a wife. It could be between a parent and a child. It could be between neighbors. It could be between friends. Know that when anger surfaces like that, it is the ugly head of shaitan that is trying to rear. So put it down. Push it out by asking for refuge in Allah so that you can become once again the honorable servant of the most merciful. Ah, mashallah, mashallah. And another thing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us, he said, Man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir. Whoever believes in Allah and believes in the day of judgment let him say what is good or keep quiet if you cannot find anything good to say about someone whether they are there or they are not there even when people are talking bad about the person just keep quiet get up give an excuse to walk away from it because you don't want to be culpable you don't want to be to be blamed for what you know nothing about. You probably don't know this person that they're talking about. Even if you know the person and they start talking ill about the person, walk away from there. Because you want to remain min ibad rahman Min ibad rahman You want to become you want to remain one of the honorable servants of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the most merciful. So and so the Prophet said, we either say what is good or we keep quiet. <clears throat> so, um, another, inshallah, I, I don't want to take on the third quality. I want us to do justice to each quality as we go ahead. So, if you have any question, you may ask me now, you know, so that, I, I don't know, maybe you're one of those people that is being bullied, you're one of those people that is being annoyed, or you're one of those people that naturally has anger issue. You cannot stand it when they say something uh, that is hurtful to you and you want to say more. You know, this is usually what happens. When they say something hurtful to you, you want to retaliate with something that is much more hurtful than that. That is not good for you. It is not good for you and it is not good for anyone around you. So try and keep it cool. You know, be like Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, who rather than deal with those that bullied him, he was kind and merciful to them. You know, after all said and done, when he regained, you know, victory over Mecca, you know, after all the tribulations and everything, the people of Mecca thought he was going to deal with them, that he was going to punish them, he was going to execute them or persecute them. But what did the Prophet say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said exactly what Prophet Yusuf والسلام, said to his brothers when they came to Egypt and he was already king in Egypt. They said, are you going to punish us for what we did to you, Ya Yusuf? He said, no. Today no harm will come to you. I have forgiven you and I pray that Almighty Allah will also forgive you. And this was what the Prophet والسلام, said to, to the Mekans who persecuted him and his people. He said, today you know nothing but peace. May Almighty Allah forgive you. I pray I have forgiven you and I ask Allah to forgive you. But you know, come into the fold of peace. Come into the fold of Islam. Come into the embrace of Allah's mercy and become an honorable servant of Allah the most merciful. May Almighty Allah make it easy for us to overcome our shortcomings. May Almighty Allah make it easy for us to overcome anger when it you know raises its its ugly head prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also told us he said the strong one is not the one that can beat someone to stoop up no you're not the strong one if you can beat everybody up you are the strong one 
if you can swallow your anger. When you're angry, you can swallow your anger. Take it in and say, you know what? For the sake of Allah, I'm not doing anything to you. May Allah forgive you. May Allah forgive me. Let us just embrace peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, when you do this, then Allah in his infinite mercy, will, in his infinite mercy, will love you and will bless you. Um, okay, so there's a question. Where do we draw the line when it comes to being merciful? Sometimes it is what? I can't say the rest of... Sometimes it is... It, it seems sometimes it seems some people deserve repercussion for their deeds. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But how about leaving it for Allah, right? I mean, how about putting it to Allah? Yeah, Allah, take care of this situation for me. Yeah, I remember during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when the persecution became too much in Mecca, Allah said, "What? My great." You know, leave Mecca for them for, for a bit. Leave Mecca for them for now. And he went from Mecca to Medina. And when he got to Medina, the nation of Islam started thriving. And then the people of Mecca took the wage war against the Prophet. And the Muslims in Medina, they took war to them in Medina. And what, what happened? Allah stood up for the Muslims because they took it to Allah. Now, the, the army of the Muslims were only 313 against over a thousand of the Kufar, the pagans of Mecca that came to wage war against them. And the Prophet ﷺ prayed, said, Ya Allah, here we are. Only so many of us and so many of them. Ya Allah, come to our rescue. So ask Allah to help you. You know, give it to Allah. And you know, when the war started, when the battle of, of Badr started, what happened? The Muslims conquered the Kuffar, and the Kuffar suffered, you know, such disgraceful defeat because Allah helped the ones that were, you know, humble, the ones that didn't start the fight, the ones that came to Allah, took the case to Allah and asked Allah to help. You cannot take laws into your own hands. You cannot defend yourself as Allah Azza wa Jalla will defend you. It may seem it's taking too long. <laughs> Please, you can't hurry Allah up for one. You don't know whether that thing, that anger that is coming from that someone, that bullying that is coming from that someone to you, is a test from Allah. You know, just as he tested the children of Israel in Egypt, where they, where they enslaved them. And they were slaughtering their male children and leaving their female children to live. And Allah then sent Moses to them. And Moses took them across the ocean. Allah opened up the path for them on the sea, right? And they, you know, they walked the dry path in the middle of two huge mountains of water. And the water was not pouring down on them. And they walked through it because Allah supported them. Allah took the fight and he, he fought the enemies for them. And then Pharaoh and his people thought, oh, let's go after them. And they went after, they still went after them. And Allah commanded the waters to fall upon them. And they all got drowned. When they were drowning, Firaun now, you know, came to terms with the reality and said, Oh, oh God, I believe in the God of Moses and Harun. Please spare me, God. Please, I believe in you now. God said, It's too late. It's too late. When death is here, it's too late for forgiveness. But I'll do something for you. I will make your body to, to stay afloat so that generations to come will learn from you, from your insolence, from your stubbornness, from your... Uh, bullying from your you know persecution of the innocent so if we cannot fight those who are fighting us let us take it to allah allah will take care of our situation allah is ever faithful he's most merciful he will take care of your situation two wrongs will never make a right if someone is making you mad and you want to make that 
person madder as it were. You don't know what the result may be. It could end up like what happened to those two gentlemen that beat themselves to, to death trying to defend their wives. So, um, may we be among those that will be granted al Jannah. Amen. That beautiful house, you know, beautiful, so beautiful and so clear, you know, maybe made from crystals or from diamonds that you can see inside from outside and see outside from inside. And you know who are going to be serving us? The angels. They're going to be making food for us, giving us clothing, you know, making, you know, those of you that like makeup, ah. Uh, the best of makeup artists are in Algeria. Those angels, they're waiting to make it so stunningly beautiful. And then the best part of it is the day we see Allah. Allah said he's going to make us see him. And the day we set our eyes on him, every day will become more and more beautiful. Today we saw Allah. Tomorrow we are more beautiful than today. And the day after we're more beautiful. And the day after we're more, And we're going to be in perpetual youthful age. Beautiful. Masha'Allah. It's something I'm looking forward to. And I pray that Almighty Allah will grant it to us. Um, and this is where we're going to um, call it a day on the program. Please don't forget to share and like and join me at 7 o'clock in the morning. He's seen time tomorrow morning as we do Insta uh, Instagram Live on uh, Light Upon Light on Instagram. Uh, that is my Instagram. And you can also check me out at Ganeat Akuridi. Uh, on Instagram and don't forget to check me out on um, at um, Afrocentric TV on Instagram and also the program has started running on Afrocentric channel that is channel 15.8 you know of our local channel inshallah ta'ala uh, I want to say a big thank you to my producer Rukaya Ola Tokumbo Olympio and Afrocentric TV the producers and directors of Afrocentric TV may Almighty Allah reward all of you abundantly. And also, you can also check my programs on um, at Tokumbo Olympio on Instagram, inshallah ta'ala. So, inshallah, we look forward to doing this again tomorrow. We'll talk more about the Ibadur Rahman as described by the Quran through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sadaqa Rasul al -Kirim. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل على إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين I remain your sister in Islam غنية أكوردي saying السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إلى اللقاء